Hey, what's up, everybody? I'd like to welcome you to another Juice tutorial. And today what we're going to talk about is a question that I got from one of the other administrators on our new chat group, Claudio. And he was asking how we can link external libraries into Juice. So I'm going to show you how to do that quickly. And um, for this example, we're going to use the Maximilian Sound Library, which is developed by Mick Grierson at Goldsmiths University. It's a really good library for getting uh, synthesis, synthesis, synthesis functions off the ground and it does other things like it plays samples and there, there are actually a lot of other functions that it that the sound library actually has that uh, I haven't even explored yet so here are some of them it does granular synthesis does enveloping oscillators has filters and so these are simple functions that we can call up without having to actually create our own implementation every time if we wanted to get something stood up fairly quickly so I'm going to show you just how to get that off of GitHub. I'm sure that some of you already know, most of you probably already know, but I'm going to tell for people that may not know. So what you want to do is you just want to copy this link. You can actually download the zip here, or you can actually go into the terminal. And in this case, if I wanted to go onto the desktop, what I could do is I could change directory, which is CD desktop. And then if I wanted to clone from this, this directory here, I could just do git clone and then put the link here. If I press enter, it'll say that I've already downloaded it. But if, if I didn't have it downloaded, then it would download it, that directory to my desk, that, that repository to my desktop. So that's how you would do it via the terminal. So I've already got it downloaded and I will show you here how to so this is the library here. I'm just going to open it up real quick, show you what's in here. So one of the key things is that, you know, when you download these libraries, they're, they're in all kinds of different configurations. And the first thing you want to do is you want to go through the readme. And then the readme normally has some key information on how to install it or what you need to do to actually get this working. So uh, this one's quite like a, a comprehensive library and that you have a lot of different examples and stuff but the one of the key things that I'd like to emphasize is that you don't necessarily need all of this stuff to actually to actually use the library so what we're going to do is we're just going to grab the key things that we need in this case for the library so if I'm going to go into the development folder I've got this folder I've already made called libraries and so what we're going to do is we're actually going to create another folder. I'm just going to call it Maximilian. Okay. I'm, a, I'm just going to copy everything for now. And then what we'll do is we'll just delete everything out that we don't need. Okay. So for example, when for the library to, to actually use the library in an Xcode project or in a C++ project, you wouldn't need, for example, uh, all of the examples. Okay. So I can just take that and I can delete that. Okay, I've already got another folder that has all the examples if I need it. Okay, but this is just so because the more things that you have in this folder, the more things, you know, the more things have to be correct uh, in order to get it to actually work. And sometimes these are actually a pain to get working. So the less things you have to uh, get working right, the better, I think. So I'm just going to delete these. Okay. And then uh, these WAV files and these text files and stuff, I'm just going to delete. Okay. These RT, RT audio and port audios and player actually refer to, these are separate sound APIs. Like if we weren't using Juice as a framework, then we would need one of these to actually get sound in and out of the computer but we don't need those in this case. And I actually had a situation where it was taking me forever to figure out why things weren't compiling properly uh, when I was using the sound library. And it was because of these files here because they were interfering with the input and output of juice and saying that I already had an input and output and I didn't need another one. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete those. Okay. Um, what else here? Player.cpp, I don't need that. Snare, I don't need that. Okay, and, I, and this Xcode project, we don't need that either. Okay, so we have, 
I think we have everything that we need here. Hopefully I didn't delete too much. So we're just going to go ahead and start up another juice project here. Okay, if I just go here, we're just going to call it, we're just going to do an audio application. And I'm just going to call it, I went through that too quick. So just going to start an audio application. And I'm just going to call this lib test. So it's like a library test. Okay, I'm just going to put it in this folder, audio programmer, create. And we have our main.cpp and our main component.cpp. Okay, so there are a couple things that you need to do to actually get this library to work. Okay, first thing that you need to do is go to exporters. Okay, then in exporters, I'm in Xcode here in this situation. I'm going to go to my de debug tab, and then you have this section marked header search paths. So for most of you probably know these header search paths, these are these are paths on your computer to get to like external libraries, external header files that you need to get your project working. So the cool thing is I can just take this, I could just drag it in here and it actually just gives me the path right there. Okay, so the path right there. If you were uploading to GitHub, then you might want to consider if the library is not too big, actually putting the library in your uh, in the folder where your where your juice files and everything are so you could upload the library with the with the uh, repository so it's not um, so they have everything right away but in this case I'm just going to link it from my libraries folder the other thing that you need to do if you go to the file explorer is you actually have to take this and you actually have to drag it into your source folders okay so it knows it knows what we're talking about so i've done that okay i've just taken that folder just dragged it in there and now we've got references to those to those files and hopefully everything should work so if i just open this up in the ide and then we go to lib test so in this case i need to uh put an include for this Maximilian header file. So if I go to my main component.cpp or my main, what am I looking at here? Um, yeah, main components.cpp. And then I just do an include. And then it's Maximilian.h. Okay, we're just going to try to build this, make sure that we're linking properly here. Oh no, it's an error. What's happened? Oh yes, I, I actually encountered this before. Uh, what we need to do is we need to go back out of this. And then if we go into the Maximilian folder itself here, there was one that was interfering. I don't know why it's interfering. I think, I think actually if I go to the source folder into Maxim, oh, maybe not. Um, but this Maxi synths we don't actually need this. So I can just delete that. I'm just going to move them to the trash and then let's just try to compile them again. It, yeah, it was interfering with it for some reason and we didn't need it. So let's just try to compile again. And we should be golden. Okay, here we go. Yeah, we had to delete those other folders because we had some some uh, redefinitions on those, so we didn't need it, and so that's why I took them out. So, great. So that compiled successfully. That's fine. So I'm just going to do a real quick test here just to make sure that everything is working properly. So we can go down here. I'm just going to make an oscillator quick. We can call it maxi osc. Okay. And I'll just call it test ask. And this is uh, all this stuff is in your Maximilian files and everything. And I'm and I'll and in future tutorials I'll go through more ways that you can use Maximilian and how you can use it with Juice and some effective ways because I'm going to be doing it for some of my projects here in the future. So as I'm doing it, I'm going to do tutorials on it to help you guys out as well. So then we can just, what we could do is we could just create a, a floating point 
a floating variable. I'll just call this the wave. And that equals test, test osc. And then what I can do is I can make a sine wave. We have phasers, we have pulse waves. I think we have square waves, triangle waves. I'll just make this a sine wave. And then I'll just put it 440 hertz. Okay, and this is a wave table. So then what we'll do is we'll just create a left speaker and a right speaker pointer so we can get the values of sine wave out of these speakers. So I'll just call this float pointer left speaker equals buffer to fill dot buffer. And then this is a pointer. So we need the arrow operator here and we need to get a right pointer. This is going to be channel zero, which is going to be our left speaker. And then we've got buffer to fill dot get start. Is it start sample? Start sample. Yeah, start sample. Okay, so that's just the beginning of our buffer. Okay, then we're just going to do the same thing for the right speaker. Okay, this is, if I'm going a little bit too fast for you here, this is stuff that I've already covered in other tutorials, so you might want to check those out. Just don't want to waste time for people that have already seen seen this stuff before. So we've got to change this to channel one because this is our right speaker. Make sure we put our semicolon at the end. Then we're just going to go and iterate through the buffer using a for loop. So I'll call this int sample equals zero. Sample is less than the buffer to fill dot buffer. Then we just got to get the number of samples that were allowed. Get num samples. Okay, plus plus sample. And then what we can do here, we actually want to put this inside our, our uh, buffer loop. So now we're there. And now we just need to put that out to the speaker. So we could just say left speaker iterate through that equals the wave. I think we could just say that. Then right speaker sample. And we can just say that equals the same thing as the left speaker sample. Okay, then we're just going to test this out. Ooh, that was a little bit loud, so I apologize for that. But as you can see, that works. There are a lot of different things here in Maximilian to check out. Um, a lot of different wave types. You have triangle, sol, noise, sine buff, song, rectangle waves. And then there's a lot of other stuff as well. You got ADSRs, you have you have a delay in here, you got a filter, you got filter types. So if you wanted to wanted to route something into a real quick low pass filter, you could do that using the sound library and I hope you use it and also I'm going to do tutorials in the future on different ways to use it and it'll be really good for us to explore AM FM RM synthesis and different synthesis techniques that we can use and building up a real quick like quick and dirty synthesizer using Maximilian and try to make that work so I hope that this was helpful for you and if you have any comments or have any questions or any sort of feedback, ways that I can do that easier or, you know, more effective ways, I would love to hear your feedback and I will see you next time.